Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to our services tonight. We're sure excited about the service, excited about everything that's going on, and excited after the service to see you in our drive through fellowship. We're looking forward to that. We're going to start our services this evening by singing Save, Save. That is page number 247 in your hymn book if you have one, and it ought to be on your song sheet. I found a friend who is all to me, his love is ever true. I love to tell how he lived in me and what his grace can do for you. Saved by his power. Saved to new life sublime, life in me sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. He saves me from every sin and harm, secures my soul each day. I'm leaning strong on his mind. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. When poor and needy and all alone in love he said to me, come unto me and I'll leave. Aren't you glad you're saved tonight? Yes. And now, Brother uh, Curtis Frazee is going to come le read our prayer letter and lead us in prayer this evening. Well, good evening. Good evening. Uh, the letter I'm going to uh, read tonight is from uh, Lorraine Johnson. Uh, she's a widow missionary. Her and her husband uh, were missionaries here in, in the United States and helped uh, uh, plant some churches. Uh, she has to say... Uh, Dear praying friends and churches, my house, two weeks ago, I had a couple very interested in my house, but as soon as they found out about my water situation, they backed out. I'm still considering water filtration or maybe drilling a new well. Uh, neither are ideal. I'm trying to seek counsel to determine what I should do. Uh, please pray for the, uh, that the Lord might override my water problem and send me a buyer for the house as is. I really need your prayers in this matter. Uh, Pastor and Mrs. Chad spoke to her just a day, uh, other day or so ago and said that uh, she had had some uh, uh, well experts come and look at it and she has maybe has some good ideas on what she can do. But uh, please keep praying for her on that. Uh, the pandemic during this time. Uh, tired and trying time, I continue to stay home alone. It's very lonely, but I've spent a lot of time with the Lord and have picked up my harp Amen. again after two and a half years. Amen. It's been nice to start playing again. I have really missed it in my life. Uh, one of the hardest things for me since my husband has passed away is making the huge decisions that I now need to make. I remember my husband laying in bed praying about different decisions that needed to be made. I would sleep like a baby knowing he was worrying about it. Mm -hmm. Now I have my sleepless nights praying yeah. about how to handle the decisions I need to make. Right. Please pray for guidance from the Lord on my behalf. Amen. Thank you again. I appreciate all of you very much. In Christ, Lorraine Johnson, uh, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you tonight, Lord, just thanking you, Lord, for how well you are, how good you are, and how yes. much you've done for us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you continue to be with America, Lord, and you'll just... Uh, 
uh, help us to get rid of this COVID-19, Lord, and, and Lord, to get us back to uh, normal living in life, Lord, and pray that you'll help us get uh, folks coming back to church, Lord, in our buildings, Lord, and, and be able to uh, get back to our normal routine. And I pray, Lord, that you'll just be up the families that lost loved ones during this time, Lord, that you'll just bless them, and Lord, and just be with them. And Lord, I pray that you continue to be with us, Lord, that uh, just pray that you'll help us, Lord, to uh, be uh, uh, in to remember, Lord, those that uh, need prayer, Lord, in this time. I pray, that you, Lord, that you'll just be at the, uh, the the Tharps, another missionary family, Lord, yes, that uh, they've contracted the uh, COVID-19, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, from what I understand, they're doing better. Yes. So please continue to pray for them. And, yes. and then uh, our, one of our members of our church, uh, Brother Maxwell, uh, he had the symptoms of COVID-19, but they said that he's doing better. So hopefully it'll be, uh, it won't be what we thought it was. And please be with uh, another member of our church, Charlie Thrasher. Uh, he's had cancer and, and it and may have come back. Lord, please continue to wait for, pray for him as well. And then uh, we need to pray for our president and our vice president and continue to help them. And, and Lord, the, uh, we just pray that you'll just uh, help them, Lord, in this time. Uh, we know that uh, the, uh, the Democrats are trying to put him down, Lord. And, and uh, we just pray that you'll continue with him and help us, Lord, to have another four years with him. And Vice President Pence, Lord, that we can continue to have a good country. Yes. And Lord, pray that you be with uh, our church members, Lord, those yes. that uh, we can't be here to get together. But Lord, I pray that you be with each every one of them and, and protect them and keep them safe. And Lord, I pray that you continue to be with us on these video services, Lord, that you'll just help us with them. And pray that we'll reach out to many out there, Lord. Maybe somebody will get saved through these uh, yes. videos, Lord. And I pray that, that that will happen, Lord, and you'll just convict some hearts, Lord, and, and uh, show them how to be saved through this preaching, Lord. And then uh, I pray that you'll just give us some rain, Lord. We need rain, and, and I pray that you'll uh, bring that to us. And I pray that you'll be with tonight's services, Lord, with uh, the pastor as he preaches. And, Lord, just uh, give him uh, knowledge and wisdom, Lord, to give us a great message. And, Lord, I pray that you'll just help us, Lord, to get back to uh, uh, our regular services here in the building. Mm -hmm. uh, forgive us our sins we've failed. We ask all these things in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll continue with singing Dwelling in Beulah Land, 449 in your hymn book if you have it. Dwelling in Beulah Land, don't forget when you get over on that chorus, give a good, loud praise God. Let your neighbors know you're praising God tonight, amen. amen. All right, here we go. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. sins of earth be set on every hand down in fear and things of earth in vain to me are calling none of these shall move me from Beulah land I'm living on the mountain underneath a cloudless sky praise God I'm drinking at the fountain shall run dry. Oh yes, I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply for I am dwelling in Beulah land. Far below the storm of doubt upon the world is beating. Sons of men Say 
cloudless sky. Praise God, I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. Oh yes, I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply, for I am dwelling in Beulah land. Very good. Thank you, and again, Good evening, it's good to see all, no I'm not, I do it again, I am not seeing you. You are seeing us, and it is good to have you with us. We're very, very thankful that you came. It's been a good uh, good day, it's been a good week, and uh, we're just excited. Uh, I, again, I know all of us are ready to be back in church, and uh, just excited. Listen, I have been told several times that people, need to hear my corny jokes. So I'm gonna give you a couple tonight, all right? Here's one of them. A father, and we are, I'm gonna go from one end of the spectrum, little kids, to a elderly lady, okay? A father took his five-year-old son to several baseball games uh, where the Star Spangled Banner was sung uh, before the start of each game. Then the father and the son attended a church on on Sunday, shortly before Independence Day. The congregation sang the Star Spangled Banner and everyone sat down. The little boy suddenly yelled out, play ball. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all like that? Yeah. Good, let me see. Uh, all right, here's one. A six-year-old six was overheard reciting the Lord's Prayer at a church service. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who pass trash against us. <laughs> well, Mrs. Gustin liked that anyway. All right, very good, very good. Uh, I have had several asked. Now this one, I wanna read this one. This is about a mom who has three sons. Uh, three sons left home, uh, went out on their own and prospered. Uh, getting back together, they discussed the gifts that they were able to give to their elderly mother. The first said, I built a big house for our mother. The second said, I sent her a Mercedes with a driver. The third said, I've got you both be. You know how mom enjoys the Bible and you know she can't see very well. I sent her a brown parrot that can recite the entire Bible. It, it took 20 preachers, 12 years to teach him. I had to, to pledge to contribute $100,000 a year for 20 years for their ministries, but it's worth it. Mom just has to name the chapter and verse and the parrot will recite it. Soon after, Mom sent out her letters of thanks. She wrote to her first son, Milton, the house was built, uh, excuse me, Milton, the house you built is so huge. I live in only one room, but I have to clean the whole house. Not too happy, was she? Yeah. She wrote to the second son, Marvin, I'm too old to travel. I stay home all the time, so I never use the Mercedes and the driver you hired is so rude. She wrote to the third son, dearest Melvin, you are the only son to have the good sense to know what your mother likes. The chicken was delicious. <laughs> well, Melvin made, Melvin made points with mom there, didn't he? Okay, that's good. Uh, that, that's wonderful. Listen, it is good to see all of you, uh, or to have all of you with us tonight. We're just very, very thankful for you coming. And... Uh, uh, I do want to say again uh, that uh, uh, I hope you'll come through the drive through right after this broadcast tonight, and it really does do us so much good. Uh, I've said something about it last Wednesday night and last Sunday morning, or this morning. Uh, just say again, you keep coming through the drive through you keep in the habit of coming to church, and we need that habit. If you'd like to come down, park on the parking lot, or as I've said, one of our younger men, he walks down here several times a week and just stands around just to be on the church property. 
is uh, is a lot and it it keeps us in the habit of driving to church of getting to church and i said this uh, i believe this morning uh we have a little bit of room when we record these and uh not a lot but if you'd be interested in coming down and and sitting with us we got lots of space we keep the limit in the auditorium to 10 and if you'd like to be one of those if you'll call uh, we'll work you up if we have a lot of you call we'll have to work a schedule on it uh, but we'd love to have you come all right uh, we've been uh, started several weeks ago having uh, some of our members come and uh, and share their testimony with us on the events leading up to their salvation and uh, uh, one of our favorite ladies at church is a lady by the name Shirley Skates. And if you're a member of our church, you know Miss Shirley. And it's a joy to have her with us tonight. And if I remember right, you hail from Virginia, right? I thought that was correct. And it's good to have her with us tonight. And uh, I know we'll get a blessing out of her testimony. Mrs. Skates, please. Good evening. Good evening. My story starts when uh, I did not grow up in a Christian home. In fact, I did not know about church. I was, went to church one time when I was little, and I realize now that it was an independent fundamental Baptist church, but I didn't know anything about church. And this nice lady led me to the back and I'm sure went through in leading me to the Lord, but I did not know what she was talking about. I'd never heard about Jesus. And I was like that for, till I was grown. Our family just never went. We only went that one time to that church. And on May 19th, 1972, I went back to church. But to get me in church, someone knocked on my door Amen. Amen. and came in, and I was saved that day. Amen. Glory to God. The most glorious day, really, of my Amen. life. Yes. The Amen. most important day of my life. Yes, praise the Lord. And that Sunday, I had four children. So the next Sunday, me and my four children were in church. Amen. And that's where we stayed. I eventually was a Sunday school teacher, uh, president of the women's WMU, and I enjoyed it. But then we moved to Fayetteville, North Carolina for one year near Fort Bragg. And there was a little independent church there that I went to until we navigated to Texas. It took me a while, but I got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. And when I was young, I remember people, when we moved to Pennsylvania for a couple of years when I was a child, probably 10 or 11, and people up there would just ask me, go ahead and talk and say something. And I'm going, oh, why? Well, we like the way you talk. <laughs> and that hung around for years. And when I got to Fayetteville, it wasn't too bad because being right there at Fort Bragg, there were a lot of people from a lot of places. And then we, like I said, we navigated here and got here as fast as I could. And this lady uh, knocked on my door one day and invited me to church. But it wasn't here. It was the big church. And so I went, it was Baptist, so I thought, well, I'll go. But it wasn't right. I knew the, the longer I was there, this is just not the way it should be. And Central Baptist was having a revival and somebody from that church said, well, they were gonna go, did I wanna go? And I said, well, sure, I, I, I'll go. They didn't even mention that it was a fundamental in the Baptist, independent Baptist church but I wanted to go. And that night I knew where I should be. Amen. Amen. I did. 
and I'm not sorry a bit. I love the people here. I love the pastor and his wife. We have good Sunday school teachers. We have things to do for children as well as adults. And I'm just happy that I, Lord led me here. Amen. I, I firmly believe that. And I'm not going to leave. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Miss Shirley, how many years have you been here now? Pastor, we are about, I don't know, six, six to eight years maybe. And I'm going to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. All the way from Virginia. We're glad you're here. Praise yeah. the Lord. All right. We're going to continue singing tonight. Uh, number 351 in your hymn book if you have one. If not on your song sheet, tell it to Jesus. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears flow down your cheeks unbidden? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Have you sins that to men's eyes are hidden? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone on the last. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. For Christ's coming kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. All right, thank you, Brother Copeland. I'm going to need your help here in just a moment. Listen, I just got, I think, a great brainstorm, and we need your help with us. We've got a, a part of our congregation here on the front. Uh, Brother Copeland, would you show them the first two and introduce them for us, please? <laughs> this here is Captain Faith. Okay, and uh, a new... Fella. Now, y'all met Captain Faith before, but you haven't met this fellow. And this is? This is Quentin the Crow. Okay, so we got him. Now, we have a third member here with us. Now, the problem is this poor fella does not have a name. Okay? Now, I know you're going to love his hairstyle. It looks like... Uh, some of the teenage boys I've seen lately. Yeah. It looks uh, looks great. Now, uh, Brother Copeland's having a hard time getting him on his hand there. Take but what I want Copeland. you to do, what I want you to do is give us... Oh, <laughs> that is nice. That is a smart one, isn't it? Yeah. I want you to do this for us. I want you to name this guy, okay? Now, this is what I want you to do. Uh, what, we're going to give you a little over a week uh, and I'm going to try, but I need you to do this. If you want to bring us a name tonight through the drive through just have a name and just call him Name the Puppet, okay? Just, but I need it in an envelope, and you can call him whatever you want to call him, and then the staff's going to determine, and we'll vote and put your name on there too, and whichever one of you win, we'll give you, a, we'll give you some kind of prize, maybe one of Brother Copeland's five pound candy bars. I'm not sure, but we'll give you, no, I won't, I won't do that to you, all right? But uh, listen, he's a good looking guy. So y'all gotta help us out and give him a name, all right? Amen. Thank you, Brother Copeland. Now, uh, our ladies trio is going to come and sing for us. 
We appreciate these ladies, appreciate them coming down. Brother Copeland, you can't see, but he's taking very good care of this fellow, making sure he's right in the amen section over amen. here. And he's getting it. There he goes. Now you've got him. All right. Very good. Ladies, please. Amen. <laughs> Uncertain days, excuse me for the water, uh, uncertain days that we live in, but they're never uncertain for the believer. We know who we belong to. We know that one day we're going to get to see him, yeah. and we rejoice in that, and we thank God for that great opportunity. Amen. Now, I'd like for you to mark just three places uh, with me tonight. Uh, not all the scriptures I'll quote or read, but just I'm going to ask you just to mark these three different places, if you would. One in the New Testament, and then two in the Old Testament. Uh, the book of Romans, chapter number 9. We're going to be looking at something there in Romans 9, Romans 10 later during the message. 
So uh, the ninth and 10th chapters of the book of Romans. And then if you would find Jeremiah chapter number nine, Jeremiah chapter number nine as well. And uh, I was just checking there to make sure I had the right verse uh, uh, mark for me. And then Psalms 126, the 126th Psalm, if you would please. I love the book of Psalms. I, I know you do too. Uh, I love I love Psalms so much, uh, so much there uh, in the book of Psalms, so much history in the book of Psalms. And uh, most of you uh, would know this, but maybe there's a new believer. Something does not know. But the book of Psalms is the songbook for the Jewish people. And this, uh, these are songs. And uh, I've heard, and uh, most of you have heard people in our time take these songs and put a, uh, and put a tune with them and sing them. And I think they're beautiful uh, when they're sang that way. Uh, and I, I want you to look with me at Psalms 126 uh, tonight. And I'm going to give you some background here a little bit, but we're going to work our way down to this thought tonight, God's way in soul winning, God's way in soul winning. Would you stand with me as we read? I'd like to read the whole chapter, and then I'm just going to go through uh, just kind of verse by verse real quick, and then we're going to, we're going to wind up down at the last two verses here, actually the last verse. Uh, for uh, the actual uh, main part of the message. But look what the, uh, what the psalmist is writing, and you can imagine the, uh, uh, there's great jubilation here in the first part of this, uh, really the whole, the whole psalm. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, Zion talking about the nation of Israel, we were like them that dream." Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. Would you pray for me? And would you pray that all of us, would you pray for yourself? Would you pray for the others that are listening? That all of us, when we come away from this, we will have a greater desire to tell others about the Amen. Savior. Yes. Father, we ask that you will forgive us of our sin we ask you to fill us with your spirit. It's really been a good service. And Lord, I thank you so much for it. And thank you, dear God, for the, uh, uh, Brother Charlie uh, videoing it and, and uh, the instrumentalist playing, Brother Copeland leading, uh, Brother Curtis helping us out tonight, Brother Curtis Frazee and, and Miss Shirley Skates with her testimony and the ladies singing. Just uh, get, let's our people uh, get involved in these services, and we're very happy about them. And Lord, we just pray you'll strengthen us and you'll use us now and help us tonight. Help me to be a help and a blessing, and just use us now. And 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 Christ's name, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me walk you down through these these verses. Uh, wonderful thing, and I, I want you to see uh, the the nation of Israel had been in captivity. Now, there's some debate about maybe who, when this was in the nation of Israel. I lean to the fact that this was when uh, they were carried away to Assyria. Uh, but now they're free. And, and it's like a dream to them. Look at verse number one. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion... We were like them that dreamed. They were just fascinated. They said, oh my, we are free. We are free. And, uh, and I'm not going there tonight, but I, I want you to understand, 
that freedom is so priceless. Yeah. And we need to remember that right now. Uh, I just want to tell you, as, as our freedoms have been diminished during this COVID-19 uh, pestilence, we need to remember that we have God-given and constitutional given freedoms, and we better be careful that none of those are infringed upon. Uh, thank you, Pastor, you're welcome. Amen. I wanna sound the alarm for that, and I uh, want us to, uh, to remember that. But these folks had been, been freed from captivity, and they're so excited, and, and then they just get so happy and, and jubilant. In verse number two, the Bible said, then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. They got so excited about the Lord and about what he had done that even the lost people were saying, wow, God has done some great things for them. Now, you probably seen that. I've seen that when God moves in a person's life or a family's life or a church's life. And uh, we, we think about... Uh, uh, you know, our, our personal testimonies of when we got saved and, and maybe people are looking at that and they're saying, wow, oh, so-and-so got saved and, and, and wow, did you see uh, that whole family started going to church? Wow, did you see that church down there really got on fire for God? So we've seen some things, maybe not to the degree that we're talking about here, but they just got so excited that other people noticed it. Amen. And you and I ought to be excited about the Amen. Lord. Other people ought to notice in our lives that God is real, that he's not dead, that he's alive, and that uh, we love him and we want to tell others about him. Look at verse number three. He said, the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. You know what they were doing? They were praising God. They said, God has done something good. Do you spend time every day praising the Lord? You listen, all of us need to praise the Lord. Uh, what, uh, that little chorus, it's amazing what praising can do. Yeah. And it really is. Have you ever, uh, uh, you know, I know you get discouraged just like I do, like all believers do at some time. But have you learned yet that the way to, one of the ways to get up out of that discouragement is to start praising the Lord? Not, don't let the devil have victory. Don't let your enemies have victory. Start praising God for how good that he is. Amen. You know, if you're saved, you're on your way to heaven. And we look around today and, and uh, uh, I was, I was uh, thinking, my wife and I, uh, usually, unless there's something going on at church, we usually have a date night on Monday night. And I was thinking this morning, I was thinking it's been five weeks now since I've taken my wife out on a date. But we've got a little extra time, so we just have dates at home, and that's good too. And, but listen, uh, we, uh, the, 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 the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. And then he says, turn again our captivity, Lord, as the streams in the south. See, they, God had already done something great for them, but they expected God to do more for them, more. See, that ought to be your life and mine. I'm not talking about material things. I'm not talking about new cars or houses or, or, or even that parrot that I read about a while ago. I'm not talking about them. What I'm talking about is that we ought to expect God to move in our heart. We ought to expect God. There ought to be a burning desire in our heart that we want to live for the Lord, uh, that we want him to be number one in our life, and yes. that we want people to know, not because of us, we're nothing, right. but because of him, right. that we ought to want to bring honor and glory to him. Then in verse number five and six, he says, though that they that sow in tears shall reap in joy, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I, I, I want you to think, just stop right there with me a moment and go back up to verse number one. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. So they had been in captivity. Do you know there are some things that may be worse than being in captivity for a believer? Can I tell you what they are? 
a cold church, a cold church. Listen, members of Central Baptist Church, God has been good to us. Yeah. Uh, I, I almost preached tonight on this fact. Are you taking for granted the blessings of God? Are you taking for granted the things of God? Like being able to come to church, like hearing the choir sing. I heard a man pray the other day, and he just, he just prayed just like this. And he said, God, I'm, I, I apologize, and I ask forgiveness. I have taken the things of God. He's a preacher for, for granted. He said, just being able to come to church, he said, I can't go to church now. He said, hearing our choir sing. He said, I can't hear our choir sing now. Getting to fellowship with the other believers. He said, I can't fellowship with them like I want to now. And he went on and on and on. And so I say this, there's some things worse that, than being in captivity. We don't want a cold church at Central Baptist. And if you're not a member of our church and you're a member of another good Bible-believing church somewhere, you don't want a cold church. You want to do all you can through prayer, uh, through uh, being kind to others and visiting with others and, and uh, reaching out, like Miss Shirley said, talking about teaching a Sunday school class. Find you a place to work in the church. Please remember this. God never saved any of us to sit. He saved all of us to work. He, he said this. Uh, listen, uh, how about this? Some things worse than being in captivity. How about a cold heart? When our heart turns cold. Listen, I, I talked about that a while ago. One of the ways to get out of that is to praise God for all he's done to you. You know, we, we stop and think. And, and uh, Brother Copeland. He's here, and I'm going to have him share a testimony with you. Many of our folks here at the church know it, but I know we have other people listening. And I'm going to have him, uh, Brother Copeland, uh, to share your testimony. And uh, he, not right now, but later, I'm sorry, uh, 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 another time. Uh, and he was saved as a boy. Yeah. But uh, I, Miss Amanda, she was saved as a girl. Uh, but... You were saved, Brother Frazee, as a boy. Uh, Brother Moore was saved as an adult. Miss Shirley was saved as an adult. Brother Hughes was saved as an adult. I was saved as uh, an adult. Listen, our salvation ought to be precious to Man, us. Yes, and our old heart starts growing cold. We ought, we, ought to, we ought to start praising God. We ought to start reading our Bible. We ought to start... To, uh, 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 praising and singing. You know, one of the things that has always helped me, always, uh, when my heart starts growing a little bit cold, is I just start talking to other people about the Lord. The and that helps me so much. So there's some things work cold church, cold heart, cold prayers. Listen, when we no longer have, what about this one? When we no longer have a vision for hell. As a believer, mm. uh, I, uh, I, I, there was an old preacher in that, that said one time, he said, what America needs today is six months of hellfire and brimstone preaching. Yeah. And he wasn't talking about preaching to lost people, hellfire and brimstone. He was talking about preaching hellfire and brimstone to us believers that we would look again and we would see in Luke 16, I took time a while ago just to look at a couple of verses and we would look at Luke 16 and the rich man and Lazarus and Lazarus died and he went to be with the Lord and the rich man died and the Bible says and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torment yeah. in that brief uh, uh, description there of hell four times the word torments tormented torment uh, are used four different times and uh, he's begging, he's begging Abraham, send Lazarus to tell my five brothers. And, uh, and uh, listen, it was sad that he got concerned about people's souls after it was too late for him to do anything. Right. Listen, today you ought to get excited. You and I have an opportunity now to reach others for Christ. And you say, well, preacher, we can't talk to everybody. But you are talking to some people. There's very few that are watching this that does not come in contact with some other people. Right. Can I be honest with you? 
uh, listen, for a little bit, I, 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 I kind of backed off from giving out gospel tracts. Somebody said, well, if you give them out, they'll be afraid they get COVID-19. And I'm just going to tell you, I've stopped that. I'm giving out tracts now. Amen. I'm talk, uh, trying to talk to people. Uh, I was in a business place recently, and I'm, I'm trying not to go in very many business places. Uh, I, I guess you'd uh, say I'm semi, what's that phrase we're using now when we have to stay at home? Uh, shut sheltered. in, sheltered in, yeah. And so I'm kind of semi there uh, because uh, uh, we do have a, an essential job that we're doing. But I, I, I was in one of the business places just yesterday and I gave one of the ladies one of our little smiley face tracks. And she said, you know, that's what gets me through the day. She was talking about the Lord. Amen. And uh, listen, you and I ought to have a vision of hell. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I read a while ago, yes, Revelation chapter 20, verse 14 and 15. It says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. This is the second death. Amen. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I want you to just think about that for a moment. Hell is a real place. Yes, sir, it is. And real people go to that real place. Hell is not a figment of somebody's imagination. It's not a word uh, uh, of profanity. Have you ever thought about that for a moment? How stupid that phrase is when somebody says, go to hell. Well, no, you know, it's a place. It's like saying, go to New York City or go to Amarillo. Of course, we can make profanity out of anything that we want to. But if people really understood, I don't think they really mean, I want so-and-so to go to hell. A person that says that probably doesn't even understand the torments of hell right. throughout yeah. eternity. People are going to burn throughout eternity. Okay, so what can you and I do about it? Look, look what he said. Five things here in, in the, verse number six. He says, he that goeth forth. He that goeth forth. So the first thing in soul winning is the go in soul winning. The go in being a witness for Christ. Uh, uh, listen, go is the first requirement uh, in soul winning. Uh, it's uh, like the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Uh, 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 Jesus said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now the Lord said, we're to go and teach. What are we supposed to teach? We're supposed to teach people that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Amen. that he came and died. on the He, he, he was born of a virgin uh, named Mary. He lived a sinless life. He went to Calvary. He died on Calvary. He was buried in the tomb, and thank God, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hot dog. Three days later, he got up again, Amen. and he is alive forevermore. Listen, all of us can tell that story. Uh, we can all tell it. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew, uh, excuse me, Acts 1 8, but ye, he was fixing to ascend back into heaven. And he said, but ye shall receive power. Where does that power come from? We cannot win people on our own to Christ. It's not a matter of what a good talker we are or how, what kind of charisma we may have, but it's having the power of the Spirit of God upon our life. Yeah. He said, but, uh, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. Uh, listen, we are to be witnessing to people here and we're also to be simultaneously a witness to people around the world. Now, how do we do that? Through our missions, Man. Uh, praying for missionaries, giving so missionaries can go. And I do want to compliment you, Central Baptist. As of today, and we pray after 
uh, the offerings this week. We can say the same thing, but we're ahead in our missions uh, for the year, some 500 and something dollars, and we're thankful for that. Amen. And those missionaries, I'll guarantee you, I, I've uh, talked to, what, two or three this week that we support. And each one of them have told me, thank you, thank you for your church's support for us. Listen, uh, 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 what is a soul winner? Think about that. What is a soul winner? See, some folks have the idea that, as I said a while ago, you have to have great charisma to be a soul winner. Nothing could be further from the truth. Now, we don't want to be rude. We don't want to be uh, unkind uh, to people. Uh, but that's not what makes us so much. Some folks have the idea, I have to know everything about the Bible. I've actually had people tell me, Preacher, I'm waiting, I'm waiting until I, uh, I, I learn enough to, to, to tell others about Christ. You know, the Lord used an illustration like this. And, and I'm just going to put it in a Chadwick paraphrase here. When you buy a candle, when does that candle give off light? Hmm? When you light it. Now you and I, and, it, it, and it's going to give off light until it burns all the way down. Now you and I have the light of Christ Man. the moment we get saved. Yes, sir. Uh, we get saved. I, I think about... Uh, Two, two young girls that I heard about, I didn't know them personally. They were 13, 14 years old in a teenage revival of all places in, a, in the city rescue mission. These two girls got saved, two sisters, just came up from Mexico. This happened decades ago and just came up from Mexico. And they, they uh, uh, learned about Christ and they went out on the street and, and introduced a man to Jesus Christ. He said, now, Pastor, do you think they could really do that? Listen, I'm talking about the power of the Spirit of God. You and I, what we can do is make ourselves tools available. And now, let me tell you, this guy, after he got saved, went back as a missionary. I think it was France. It may have been Spain. And listen, sure, God can use us. Who, who, I, I was thinking earlier today, about a young girl named Kathy that was in one of the churches we started up in the state of Washington. Kathy was eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old, and she would go throughout the neighborhood and where she uh, went to school, and she would bring those children to, to, to church and even won some of them to Christ. Amen. Listen, I, I think about a, a, a man that... Uh, that uh, uh, was a, a, uh, uh, in construction. He was a drywaller, and he'd hung, hang sheetrock and tape and texture and all of this kind of stuff, and he had hurt himself. He had fallen, and, and he had messed up his back real bad, and he couldn't do that anymore. But, you know, he did, I, well, that, through that, we got to lead him and his wife to Christ. You know what he does? He, he loves to go to the VA hospital. And he just goes out to VA hospital and he passes out tracks. He's a veteran and he goes out and he passes out tracks. Uh, uh, housewife, I heard about a little timid, shy, and I knew this lady. And a timid, shy housewife, small lady. And she was working in the, the church's uh, food pantry and she got a broken heart for souls. And one day, uh, they had just had this food pantry, I think, once a week or once a month. I don't remember what it was. But she got to lead five people to Christ. Amen. One day. One day. Listen, so what, what makes a soul winner? It's somebody that will say, Jesus, I'm willing to go. Amen. Now, right now, yeah, well, yeah, church members, you know we go soul winning. We go door knocking. We can't do that right now. But there are people we can talk to. What about all these people that are walking now in our neighborhoods that they never used to walk? We have seen people we did not even know existed. Uh, you know, we've been in our house uh, uh, almost four years, and, uh, and we're seeing people, listen, we can talk to those. Amen. So we see the going so winning. Next thing we see is the broken heart in so winning. He that goeth forth and weepeth. 
He that goeth forth and weepeth. Uh, Jesus, I want you to think about his broken heart. In Matthew 23, 37, the Bible, Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicks under her wings, and you would not. He said, I wanted to bring you. I wanted to save you. I wanted to give you eternal life. His heart was broken. Uh, listen, uh, we need to pray for tears. We need to pray for a concern. We need to pray for a broken heart. But until we get it, we just need to be obedient to God. He commanded us. I have so many people say, Pastor, pray for me that I'll get a burden for the lost. I'll get a broken heart, so I'll go soul winning. That's backwards. God doesn't waste burdens. You and I get a burden when we go. We get a burden when we talk. We get a burden when we see people's condition and realize. Jeremiah, I ask you to mark this back in Jeremiah chapter number 9. And I, I, I want you to see this, just talking about a broken heart. And I want you to see this. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. And in verse number one, he says, Oh, that my head were waters and mine eyes a fountain of tears. You see what he's asking for. A broken heart, just like we've been talking about. That I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. He said, Oh, God, I am praying that you give me a broken heart. Now, can I show you that Jeremiah did not have a broken heart? Look at the next verse. He said, oh, that I had in the, in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they be all adulterers and assembly of treacherous men. And he goes on and on. He could be talking about America today. Yeah. He said, oh, God, I live in such a sinful place. I don't want this. I want to have a motel out in the wilderness somewhere where I just rent out the rooms and maybe feed the people, and I don't want to be worried about this anymore. But Jeremiah knew that he was wrong, and he's praying, God, give me a broken heart. Give me a broken See, you and I, you and I need to have a broken heart. I ask you to mark Romans chapter number 9. Look in, in the, yeah, you've seen this before here at church, but uh, Paul said, verse number one of Romans 9, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ, from my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Listen, you don't know that burden. I don't know that burden. Paul said, I would be willing to die and go to hell myself if it would get the Jewish nation saved. Now, I've never, I've never come to the place in my life where I've said I'm willing to go to hell for somebody else. So you and I probably couldn't pray a prayer like that, but we could pray one like Romans chapter 10 and verse number 1. He said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is they might be saved. Could we say, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for America or prayer for Amarillo is that they'll be saved. I, I, brethren, my heart's desire for my brothers, for my sisters, for my mother, for my cousin, for my next door neighbor, brethren, my heart's desire is for them that they might be saved. See, we need to, we need to have a, a broken heart. Uh, listen, we need to pray like Jeremiah did I mentioned the fellow a while ago that uh, goes, or, or used to, I think he's moved now, and I, I'm not sure there's a VA hospital near him, but uh, what a witness he was. I, I still remember being in his home, in his wife's home, getting on my knees and showing him how to get saved. And when I come to Romans 5 a which says, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I just began to weep uncontrollably and begging and pleading with them to get saved. And they didn't get saved then, but within about two or three weeks, 
Both them and all three of their children had been saved. Amen. You see, tears break people's heart. Now notice the word of God in so when you go back with me. And, and he says here in Psalms 126, He that goeth forth, that's the go, and weepeth the broken heart, bearing precious seed. What is that precious seed? It's the word of God. Now, I told you a while ago, you don't have to be a Bible scholar to be a soul winner, but you do need to give out the word of God. If, you, if all you know is John 3, 16, I heard about a fellow one time that he couldn't talk, but he wanted to be a soul winner. So where he lived, the, the, the highway kind of did a 90 degree turn, or the road, and he, he just, so he took a big piece of cardboard and he wrote on that cardboard, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And throughout the day and throughout the night, uh, he would go down there and he'd take his big, big cardboard and he would just hold it up like this for people that were driving by to read that sign. See, there's a way that you can be a witness. There's always a way that I can be a witness for Christ. I can always do that. Listen, we need the word of God in soul winning. And then we see the certainty of results. Look at the last part of what he said. Bringing his sheaves with him. Bringing his sheaves with him. Now, let me tell you this, you're not going to witness. I mean, you're not going to win everybody you try to win to Christ. The majority of what people are going to tell you, no. Or they're going to say, not interested. Or they're going to say, I'm sorry, I'm busy right now. Uh, you know, I'm doing something so important. And they're really not most time doing anything all that important. And certainly never doing anything as important as their salvation. But you know what you are going to do? If you start witnessing to people and you just stay at it, you're going to get to win some of them to Christ. God's going to give you some of them. He, what did he say? Bringing his sheaves with him. That is an absolute promise. Now notice the soul winner's joy. He says, doubtless shall come again with what, folks? Rejoicing. Rejoicing. You all have heard that there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repenteth. And most people say the angels rejoice every time they get saved, somebody gets saved. Now, that may or may not be true, but that's not what that scripture said. Right. He didn't say that the angels were rejoicing. He said that there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels. Whose presence? People like you and I. People that have been saved, thank God, praise the Lord, hallelujah. That, uh, man, when we get saved, uh, here on earth we know there's a difference. And when we get to heaven and understand our full salvation, we're going to be some happy people. We are going to be some joyful people. We're going to be rejoicing. As a matter of fact, leading someone to Christ is second only to your own salvation. Every time you lead someone to Christ, you kind of get to live a little bit over again of your own salvation. Uh, I, I, wa I, wanna, uh, I wanna read you something in closing here. Over in the book of, uh, of First Thessalonians, uh, excuse me, uh, yes, First Thessalonians, uh, chapter number two. In First Thessalonians chapter two, Paul writing the church at Thessalonica, and he says this, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are, are not ye even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. Do you know one of these days, those of us that are saved, that have been trying to actively win others to Christ. Now, God didn't tell us we had to win anybody, but he did command us to warn them and tell them how. And he said, one of these days when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, he's going to give us what we call a soul winner's crown. That's what I just read about. And we won't take that crown and glory in it. 
but we'll take it and lay it at the master's feet, at our Savior's feet. I want that crown. I want that crown, not for me. But I don't want to go. A wonderful song. Must I go when empty-handed? Must I meet my Savior's soul? So, not one soul with which him to bring him. Must I meet my Savior's soul? Listen, you and I need to be busy winning others to Christ. And let me ask you, are you saved? Do you know if you died right now, heaven would be your home? If you're not, why don't you do this? Get on your knees. Ask God to forgive you of your sin. Ask Christ to come into your heart and be your Savior. Yes. What a wonderful blessing to know that you're saved, know you're on your way home. Believer, let you and I, let's get busy winning others to the Savior. Listen, we hope you'll come join us through the drive through in just a few minutes. We'd love to have you. What a blessing uh, that uh, that would be, is to have you come and, and be with us. And uh, we would enjoy that so much, just getting to visit with you. And uh, we thank the Lord for, uh, for you joining us tonight. And uh, Brother Copeland is going to come and lead us in our dismissal uh, chorus here. I'm going to sing, Isn't He Wonderful? Amen. What a wonderful thing it is for the Lord to allow us to be part and seeing other people saved. And let's sing about His wonderfulness tonight. 468 in your hymn book, if you have it. Isn't He wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Lord bless you. See you soon.